Hello everybody, welcome back. It's April 5th, 2021, and this is video number two in my series of videos on keeping deer and rabbits out of your garden, which is a common question, especially this time of year, you know, spring comes, you know, things start to grow again, and then um, we want to protect all of our hard work and investment and time and money. So this is another product. Uh, if you missed video number one, in video number one, I talk about the stay green netting and how we use it for our vegetable garden. This is great for a concentrated area. You know, if you have a 20, like we do, a 25 by 28 ish garden, you can net that in and sort of concentrate right there. Um, and that this makes sense for that. Um, but you know, this isn't viable for large scale uh, use. Uh, I've, I mentioned in that video, I actually worked for somebody one summer between uh, teaching, you know, in summertime when there's no teaching. Uh, I worked on a, a person's large garden slash farm and he had us, we spent almost a month installing acres of this stuff. That's where I learned about it. That's where I first saw it. And I know that it works from that. So if it works for acres and acres, it's going to work for, you know, a regular person's size garden. But this stuff here is another product, uh, this deer and rabbit. This is more for a large scale application. So if you've got an acre or so, or we have a little over half an acre of landscape, this is something that you can use over a large area that's just more user friendly. You know, I, I'm all about user friendly and I also want the landscape to look nice. This wildlife netting, you can't see it, but it also requires fence posts and stakes and so forth. Um, this deer and rabbit spray, the way it works is smell. So if you take a look at the active ingredients there, uh, putrescent egg solids, garlic, uh, thyme, oil, it, it's very fragrant, we'll put it that way. It stinks to high heaven. Once it dries, we can't smell it, but deer have a sense of smell and so do rabbits that are many, many times stronger than ours. And so they're still going to smell it even after we can't. So I'll show you how I apply it. Today's April 5th. I've already applied this the other day, um, but I filmed uh, myself putting this on in the winter time. So I'm gonna kind of rewind in time and show you how I do this. Okay, when we get to the spray part here, this is what you wanna get right here. There are many others. This is the one that works um, in our experience. And I'll sh I show you elsewhere in the video, I'm filming this in different parts. So at some point in this video, either you've already seen it or you will see it, uh, we have trail cams in the yard and there are deer everywhere, every single day, bucks, does, all kinds of things. Uh, this works. Hey, get out of there. If you don't spray, they will destroy your fruit trees. There's just no two ways about it. Absolutely will happen. If you do spray, it's the stuff is about 95% effective for us. They may nip here and there, very incidental. You would never notice unless you're really paying attention. Um, trees you don't spray it with, completely destroyed. Um, so this stuff works. So this is the one to get. Don't try to skimp. Um, this is not the cheapest stuff. This bottle was about $32, I think, on Amazon. Uh, and it, but I, but it makes three gallons, you know, and so you might be able to get a month out of it in the summer or two months out of it in the winter. I get one session out of it, you know, so I'll go through two of these in the summer each month and one in the winter. Um, it, but, you know, you got to kind of weigh how serious you're going to be. If you follow the steps I'm showing you, you will have success in keeping the deer off your fruit trees. Um, but it does it does come at a cost in terms of time and energy and money. So just kind of know that going in, there aren't really set and forget solutions short of a 12-foot stockade fence around your property. Uh, so what I'm showing you are things that will work very well. Are, you know, they're not the cheapest, but they're also not impossible to do. Um, and you might be able to get away with a little bit less, um, but I'm kind of, uh, I'm determined that they're not going to destroy our orchard. So I, I go all in, but this does work. And so we're going to show you how we use it. Okay, so now we're just going to pour it in and I just spilled a little, unfortunately, not much. But you can see that is, that's what it looks like. It's kind of like a milky, sort of opaque color, kind of a beige color. This stuff stinks to high heaven too. That's how it works. You can sort of see. Get a look in there. So we're gonna pour it in. Be careful, I, I knocked this over so a little tiny bit of it spilled. 
One of the other things is you want to spray on a pretty dry day. So you don't want to spray if it's going to rain later that day. This stuff is pretty waterproof and if you ever want proof of that, get some on your hands and try to wash it off. It's, uh, it'll stick. But still, you, what you want it to do is to dry onto your trees or your plants or whatever you're spraying it on. And uh, once it dries, it's pretty waterproof. Okay, so here we are at the pear tree and you're just gonna use a fan. You can kind of see it's like a fan and just give it a really good soaking. Get everything all the way down to the ground. Nice thing about winter time, there's not a lot of leaves, so you just have to get the, get all of the tree right to the bottom. That's a pear tree. They don't seem to care as much for pear trees, but I still spray them anyway. So here's an apple, knob russet. Same thing, we're gonna hit it with the fan. You can't really see it, but it's sort of a fan spray. Colville Blanc tree. Oh, you can kind of see that there, the, the fan. Get the top, why not? Trying to turn it sideways just to try not to waste it. Like I mentioned, it's expensive stuff. You can see the fan effect there, getting all the branches. And again, you want to get around both sides of the tree. It's a little tricky to hold the camera and do this at once, but there you go. And getting the trunk. Always get the trunk. As you can see, the soap hanging in the tree, that's just another, another angle. You want to do it all. If you're serious about having an orchard where there are a lot of deer, and you don't want to lose your crop or your growth, you've got to take all these steps that I'm talking about. So as you walk through, definitely smell it in the orchard. That's okay. If we can smell it, the deer can. So that's really all there is to it. Um, it really, you just want to make sure you spray all of your um, trees really well. Uh, I tell you, I'm voicing this over on May 13th and watching this scene from the winter. I do not miss, do not miss winter. Uh, so much more fun in the springtime, in the summertime. Yeah, winter's necessary and everything for our trees, but uh, it's a lot more fun this time of year. But that's really all there is to it. Make sure you spray, and uh, the key is to really keep up with it. You, you know, there's, it, as I mentioned, it's not a set and forget. You have to spray and then every couple weeks spray again because your trees will grow and the new growth on your trees, if you think about it, it's new growth. It was never sprayed. It wasn't there before to spray in the, in the spring and summer. In the winter, that's not really so much an issue. Um, but it isn't the cheapest, but it does work. Um, don't waste your time throwing human hair. I mean, do you really want to throw handfuls of human hair from a barber shop? Assuming you can even get that anymore, who knows, but is that really something you want to do anyway? Throw a bunch of human hair around your gardens and yard. It doesn't work. Don't waste your time. Um, it, if it does work at all, it's because if it does work, which I highly doubt, it's the shampoo in the hair probably um, confusing the animal's sense of smell. But do you really want to see tufts of hair blowing around your yard? That's just gross to me. But that, that's just me. I mean, it, it, if you think differently, then that's fine. Um, I'm just going around in this video here spraying the pawpaws and everything else, but um, I always spray the pawpaws even though they have a built-in defense. I just figure, you know, I'm going to spray everything that I care about in the yard anyway. Um, it's not a big deal to give it an extra spritz, but it is a commitment, you know. It, it's, it's a lot of work. This is probably, to be honest, the most work in the orchard um, spraying for deer in terms of time and especially money. But time too, I mean, because in the summertime when all these trees are leafed out, um, there's a lot more to spray because you have to hit all the leaves and, and make sure of that. Um, and I soak them. You, you probably noticed in the video, I don't just give them a quick little squirt. I really soak these trees down. You got to mean business with this stuff. Um, if you go at it halfway, um, the, the deer are going to get you. You sort of have to stay a step ahead of them. Um, 
they'll find your weakness. If you didn't spray a tree, they'll find that tree and they'll just destroy it. And one night it could be gone. Um, that happened to me actually the first year we lived here. So I had a, I had a little um, donut peach tree. It was beautiful. And in one night they just nipped it right to the ground. Um, here, here's a trail cam of that same part of the yard. I mean, these things are everywhere. So they're a menace. They really are. Um, but this stuff does work. And so I show the pictures of the deer just to sort of reaffirm that we, um, we have them around, unfortunately, but it, it is effective. So thank you for watching. If you have comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoy our content, please subscribe for more videos.